debut the glitch Pokemon. Okay, so my game uh, hard crashed there. All right, Mew worked. So there is Mew. There it is. Literally second try. Cannot fly to the Pal Park. That means I have to swim there. Minor problem. Uh, I forgot the DLC. This I'm recording this the day the DLC came out. I have to wait 40 minutes, so I will uh, come back then. <laughs> the time's going up. No. Hey everybody, what's going on? Uh, today I'm gonna be getting a perfect shiny Mew from Emerald version, and I'm gonna be doing it for the Mewtwo event that's going around, the seven star raid, which is pretty tough. Uh, but if you use a Mew during it, you get a buff to your Mew, and it also gets the Mightiest Mark. Emerald is the only game where you can get a legitimate shiny Mew, so I'll be doing it there, and I'm also going to go the extra mile using uh, some RNG manipulation to get it perfect. In addition, I'm going to be using some glitches. As you can see, I'm on Faraway Island. This is a Japanese version of Pokemon Emerald, but if I walk in here, there is no Mew. I've already got the Mew. In fact, the Mew is the Pokemon I used to fly. I got this on stream several years ago. So, we're going to be using some glitches to first respawn it, and then we're going to head back to this island. So, the first thing I want to do is make Mew reappear. Now, in order to do this, we're going to be using arbitrary code execution, and that is this Pokemon is a glitch Pokemon. If I look at its summary, it's going to cause the Pokemon box names to be executed as code. And so, what we're going to be doing is renaming the boxes to make Mew reappear. So to do that, I'm gonna open up the internet and we're gonna click Emerald Ace here. Uh, and this is gonna take us to Slipenear's code paste bin. This one has the one to make Mew reappear. So uh, make Mew reappear, and there it is. So this is the code. Uh, this one will let Mew reappear if you've caught it or uh, uh, KO'd it. Uh, so we're gonna scroll down to the Japanese one. The nice thing about Japanese uh, arbitrary code execution is that the codes are way, way shorter. So if we scroll down here, we're at the Japanese codes. This is like the arm assembly. Uh, okay, so yeah, they're usually shorter than the American codes, uh, which is the nice thing here. So first thing we're gonna do, uh, talk to the PC. And now a lot of the time you need to find box one because you don't know what it's gonna be named. So what we can do is click deposit. And if I click this, it'll automatically default to box one. So this is our box one. It's got 13 Pokemon in it. Uh, what we're gonna do is click name and we're just gonna type in the codes here. So. All right, timer's going, let's continue this. So the code is typed out. Now what we're gonna do is save. I always recommend save, oops. I always recommend saving after you type the code because saving lets you, uh, like if you have a typo, hopefully it's only in one box, you don't have to retype the whole thing. So now what we're gonna do is view the glitch Pokemon. Okay, so my game uh, hard crashed there. Uh, I couldn't do anything. And I'm actually thinking it's because I just realized this is looking for a 615 execution. And so what that means is the species of glitch Pokemon that you have. It has been so long that I do not remember what glitch Pokemon I have. But what I do know is 85F seems familiar. So I actually think I have this Pokemon. So I'm gonna try that instead. And this is way shorter than usually what I would be having. Uh, on any of the codes or what I'm used to anyway. So I actually suspect this is what it's gonna be. And so I think this code will work now. So let's run this one. Check this. All right, I left. And so what we're gonna do is go back to the island to check if Mew is there. All right, Mew worked. So there is Mew. Perfect. But as for this working, like it's good Mew is back, right? But how are we gonna get it to be perfect and shiny? Well, the first thing we need to do is find what kind of target Mew that we want. And so the way we're gonna be doing that is using this app called PokeFinder. Uh, in it, you're gonna make sure you're in the Gen 3 tab, and then I'm gonna click Static here. For your trainer profile, just make sure it's an Emerald, nothing else matters. Uh, and then we're gonna click Searcher, and we're gonna click Events, and we're gonna click Mew. Then I want this Mew to be perfect in everything. I want every single stat to be 100% guaranteed. I also want it to be timid. And there is exactly one of these in the whole game. And so when I say there's exactly one of these in the whole game, what I mean is there is 4.2 billion spreads in the entire game. And this is the only Mew that is six IV and shiny with a timid nature. There's probably, if you uncheck timid, there's probably like a calm one 
and like a modest one. Yeah, but we're gonna be going for the timid one. The odds of your trainer ID making this shiny, it's low. So how do we fix that? Well, we're gonna use Ace again to change our secret ID. I'm gonna type 11645. And I don't know what my secret ID is. This is something that you have to like find by getting a full odd shiny or something like that. So uh, what we can do is go into a different window in Pokefinder, which is the IDs window, click that. And then in here, we're gonna be able to find a secret ID that will make this Mew shiny. So we're gonna click five red leaf green emerald and we're gonna type my trainer ID in here. One, one, oh, six, four, five. Initial advance is zero, it doesn't matter. Max advances, that doesn't matter either. What we're gonna click is PID. So I'm gonna click that. And then the Mew that we found, this timid one, we're gonna hover this PID and hit control C. And we're gonna paste it into the PID section here. And I'm gonna click generate. And now any of these secret IDs will make this Mew shiny. So if I copy this secret ID, right? I go into the profile manager, I edit this. I paste it here, I hit okay, I hit search. And now this is a star Mew, perfect. So what we're gonna do, is change our secret ID to this. How do we do that? Well, Sleipnir does have, I don't know if it's in this document. Oh, this has the one for reading your trainer ID. Sleipnir does have a way to change your trainer ID and your secret ID uh, in this paste bin, but it's a bit uh, complicated. You have to like read a bunch of symbols. Let me see if I can find it. Change TID or SID. So you could see it's saying like, according to these symbols, change this like if the, this is very complex and so my friend Xiao has uh has ported over this code into a much easier to use thing so if we go to eShark github emerald ace web and we click japanese we can drop it down and we can click change trainer id and secret id um the exit code has to be null you can ignore that and all we have to do is put the secret id we want in here so i'm gonna do that now so i already forgot what it was Four seven nine four six. We're gonna hit Control C. We're gonna paste that, and I'm just gonna hit Compute, and it's gonna give us the code now. So this is the whole thing that we have to type. That's it. It's only four box names again, and uh, we just have to make sure uh, we type everything correctly. So this is box four. I already know where I'm at. This is box three, two, one, and we just have to type this in. Uh, so this should change our secret ID to what we need it to be. So I'm gonna look at the glitch Pokemon. I usually wait for it to flash. Don't know if that's necessary. I'll check my trainer ID to make sure the trainer ID isn't what changed. Trainer ID didn't, didn't change. I have no real way to tell what my um, secret ID is. There's just no way for me to know. Um, so I just have to hope it changed it properly. And that's it, simple as that. Uh, okay. At this point, what we now need to do is go into the Lilico contest hall. We're gonna be trying to now change our seed by using a painting. So with our secret ID changed and our Mew respawned, what we're gonna do now is try and hit uh, the Mew. But Mew is far away. If I take a look at Gen 3 uh, Static Searcher, this Mew, if I was to just use the standard Emerald Seed of zero, is going to be 165,562,488 advances away. This, as you might guess, is a long time. I'm not going to wait that long because I don't want to. But what can I do? Well, if I go into searcher and I click the seed here, what I can do is hit control C and this is going to copy it for me. And we're going to go to another website that I've used before called the 10 lines. So the 10 lines basically lets you search how close or, different nearby initial seeds to this 16-bit seed. So what you're gonna do is paste the seed there and I'm gonna do 10 results and I'm gonna hit submit. And this is gonna give you the 10 closest results to this 16-bit state. Now the closest one is 448B, but that's only 900, uh, 9,919 advances away. And then the seed timing is actually a little bit long. It's gonna be kind of tough to get this one. I think it's doable, don't get me wrong, um, but this is only a minute and a half of waiting thereabouts to 919. Um, and it's like, you know, I don't really know that I want to risk such a low weight while doing seed attempts this long. 
So what I think is a more consistent way to do it is aim for a seed that takes less time, even if the amount of advances after you hit the seed takes a long time. So that's what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going for this seed. So how do we aim for the seed? What does this all mean, right? Well, it's telling you that uh, on seed C14, so if I copy this and I put it into Poke Finder uh, in the generator section, and I search for this Mew, it's gonna tell me this is where the Mew's at. Again, I don't want to wait 397,000 more than once, so I'm not going to, because using battle records, we can preserve where we are. But how do we hit this seed? Well, the way we hit this seed is by talking to the painting after this amount of frames has passed. The seed in decimal is basically how long you're waiting. So what I'm gonna do is click save here. Then I'm gonna go to my website, blissy.net, and I'm gonna click tools, and I'm gonna click flow timer converter or excuse me, RSE Paint Flow Timer Converter. That's what I'm gonna click. I'm gonna click my game, it's Emerald. I'm gonna click NDS because I'm playing on a DS. And then I'm gonna be doing Sweet Scent Indoors. I know Mew isn't a Sweet Scent Pokemon, don't worry about that. Intro to MS, 5000 is fine. Seed Advances, so Seed Advances is this, 3092. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it here. Leave Delay Box alone. Pokemon Advances. What we're gonna do is set this to 1200. Then I'm gonna click calculate. And now this result, what we can do is copy it and put it into flow timer. The way this is gonna work is you're gonna to talk to the painting on this advance, right? That's what flow timer is setting you up for. But you don't know that you hit your target correctly, right? It's a 1 60th of a second timing. So what you do after that is you go to Victory Road where there's decently high level Pokemon and you check their stats to see if you actually hit the correct target that you were you know, aiming for. And by doing that, then we can tell if we've hit it or not. So there's a few things we have to do in order to prep for this first. So the other, the first thing is to go into Gen 3 Seed Assistant, a tool made by Papa Hepe. We're gonna take Mew up here. Actually, we're not gonna take Mew because we're gonna be aiming for a bunch of random wild Pokemon. So we actually have to go into wild mode. In Emerald version, we're always on Method H2 for wild Pokemon, mostly on Method H2 for wild Pokemon. Uh, we're going to click Emerald. We're going to click Victory Road. Uh, and then we're going to leave that at that. Uh, and now we're also going to set our target advances. Uh, we have that picked in here. That's our Pokemon advances is 1200. Um, and we're going to do yeah, plus minus. We can do 20. And as for the Enter Seeds box, what we're going to do is uh, this seed, we need to be up and down it. Uh, we need to be like before and after it. So what I like to do is just do do Google Sheets. So I'll paste this, and then we'll do equals E19 minus one. And then we can just drag this up. E19 plus one. And then we can just drag this down to, I don't know, here. Seems fine to me. And then at the top of this, we do equal des to hex. And then we do E1. Then it'll autofill all of us for us. And we're aiming for C14. And now we have all of the hex seeds for the ones above and below it. And we can paste that into here. Bada boom, bada bing, we figured it out. And now we can just copy and paste the timings into flow timer, which I've already done. And aim for our seed. So the first timing, it's going to go. I'm going to soft reset. That was weird. I just kept missing the start button. <laughs> all right. And now we're going to wait until the first set of beeps happens, or the next set of beeps, excuse me. And when they do, we're gonna press A on the painting there. I hit A there, back out, and now we're gonna go and fly. And it looks like I'm not gonna have enough time. There's just no way I have enough time. So I overestimated how, or underestimated how long it would take for me to walk there. All I have to do is change this. We'll just change it to 2100. Give ourselves a little bit more time, no big dealio. Um, and we just try again. That is just a mistake. Don't know how long it takes. Try again. And also, we're going to have to update in this tool. We're aiming for 2100 here. All right, we hit A there. And then we're going to back out, and we're going to head to Victory Road. You have to be pretty quick here. The reason I like to be quick as well is I don't want to waste time. Um, like, I like I want the, the whole process, I want to be as short as I can make it. Step one tile away from the door and then hover over your sweet scent. Sweet scent actually fails if you use it at the door. That's why you have to take one step away from it. All right. 
And so now what we're going to do is prep for this. So I'm going to take Lyron here. And we're just going to check what's going on with this guy. It's girl, excuse me. Uh, okay. Noon key that's relaxed. Uh, and then we're going to type in the stats. 98, 83, 130, 46, 49, 39. And we're going to do is click calculate stats and we're going to hit search. Uh, so we hit C18 on the C. This is this is the Pokemon that we hit. Um, slot two, the way you can check slot two uh, as well is by clicking this drop down and click uh, Lyron. You can see it'll be encounter slot two. Bam, there we go. So we know that's what we hit and we were a few seeds late. Uh, in fact, we were four seeds late because we are aiming for this seed, which is C14. I just paste, this is the seed that I hit, right? I cross reference this, I hit C18, it's 3096, right? And then frame hit, I just always say that I hit the correct frame. This doesn't matter, this 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 target here, it doesn't matter. So I just ignore it and I say that, and I lie to it and I say that I hit it because all we care about, all we care about is hitting the right seed. We don't care about hitting this random Lyron target, right? All right. Stay there. Back out and go back to Victory Road again. And this is pretty much what we do until we hit the, the seed that we're aiming for. Oops, that's the Pokedex. Hopefully I can make it in time. Oh my lord, no. Oh my gosh, I messed everything up. So we can still check this, by the way. What I'm going to do is go directly into Sweet Scent and just use it right away. I don't know how I fat fingered everything so bad, but we're going to be pretty late, probably. Um, and so what I'm going to do is up the plus and minus here to like 200. And I think that's probably going to give us a good idea of where we're at. So I'll catch this Lyron with a Master Ball. 182, 122, 52, 42, 37. Calculate and see if we get anything. I don't get anything. I'm going to increase this to 500 because I could literally have been that late. All right. It looks like we, we are on C14. It looks like we're actually on seed on the one that I goobed up. I thought my button presses felt good. I'm going to increase this to a thousand to see if I get anything else. I get nothing else when increasing it to a thousand. We'll check H1 and H2. I get nothing on H1. I get nothing on H4. I mean, all right, perfect. So this means I'm definitely on seed. So because we're on seed, what I have to do now is make a battle record because I want to preserve this seed, right? I want this to be my new starting point. And the way we preserve that is by going into the battle frontier and making a battle record. Now, the easiest way to, the most simple way to do this, I should say, is what I'm going to be doing here, which is the battle factory. However, the most efficient way is to set up a team of exploding Pokemon for the battle tower. So go in here, level 50, that's fine. And we're just gonna take rentals. And what we wanna do is lose this match as fast as we can. And we just wanna lose here. Now, losing can take a while, uh, but that's how it is. All right, so all three of my Pokemon has fainted. Uh, the battle is going to end. And this dude's gonna ask me a yes or no question. He's gonna first save. Then he's gonna say, do you wanna save a battle record? I do in fact want to do that. So now when I go into the battle record, which is in my trainer card and it's this button here, that's gonna show me the battle versus the hiker uh, that I just lost to. And right when the battle starts before any Pokemon are sent out, it sets you to the RNG state that you were at, at the start of the battle. So what we're gonna first do is change this program to just be seed C14, right? Then I'm gonna fly back to Victory Road and we're gonna be using another wild Pokemon to verify where we're at within the RNG. Now, the first Lyron we had to keep, this one we do not. And we're gonna set everything up. So my target advances, they are gonna be 15,000. Because I do not currently know where I'm at in the RNG sequence, right? So we're gonna type 14999. And this is gonna be our way of searching for where we actually ended up is go to the regular flow timer converter on my website. Make sure we click Emerald. Make sure we click DS. Make sure we click Sweet Scent Indoors. All we're gonna do is set our encounter advances to like 
Oh, we don't even need to do all of this, actually. Now that I'm, I'm realizing. Well, it doesn't matter. Intro advances, we'll set to zero. Um, encounter advances, we'll set this to 800, and we'll click Calculate. All we have to do is copy this number, 8918, and we can put that into Flow Timer Converter, is open the battle record the moment I hit... Uh, uh, we're going to open the battle record, and then we're going to hit Start on this timer the moment I close it. Ready? So it's open. Close that. And we're just going to go over to Oddish and we're going to sweet set to see where we're at. So keep in mind, we waited 800 extra advances. Uh, we're going to have to keep that in mind for a little bit later. So we got a Zubat here. It's 85, 43, 36, 28, 44, 47. Calculate and hit search. So we are on it. We landed on advance 13. Uh, 1,689. We're going to subtract 800 from that, so I'm going to open up a calculator. Minus 800. So this is where we landed. This is when we pressed... Uh, this is basically when we pressed A. Um, accounting for the, the, the 289 or whatever from the, from the sweet scent. So this is where we're at. And we need to get to, if you pay attention to the 10 lines, we need to get to this number from this number. So what I like to do is open up another calculator, right? Paste this here, and we're gonna subtract this from it. So we need, to, we still need to wait 384,683. On top of that, we don't wanna overshoot this because if we go too far, then we won't be able to hit the mute. So we need to still be, I usually like to be 5,000 away from from the mute, give or take, right? So what I'm gonna do is subtract around 10,000 advances from it. One, two, three. So we're gonna be going for this many advances. In fact, I'm gonna subtract another 5,000 from it just in case. Then I'm gonna divide this by two. The reason I'm dividing it by two is because when you get into a wild battle, the RNG actually moves twice as quickly. So we can only wait 184,000 advances. So we're gonna be waiting this. We went around uh, 15,000 advances under. I think that should be good enough. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna put this into flow timer converter. I'm gonna hit calculate and we're gonna wait this long. So open this bad boy up. We're gonna go into the battle record. We're gonna hit start and close at the same time. And then we're gonna just start a sweet scent battle right away. And we're just gonna wait at the battle. That's all we're gonna do. We just have to wait this timer out at this point anyway. So I'm gonna hover over the run button and we're gonna chill. All right, so battle's almost over <clears throat> and we're just gonna run when the timer says to run. I'm just gonna click it now actually, it doesn't even matter. And now I'm going to go make a uh, battle record as soon as possible. Um, you want to be quick here. Uh, I'm fumbling it because I haven't played the game in an hour. <laughs> uh, but you want to be quick here. Um, and what we're going to do is run over to the factory and do exactly what we did before. Now, we should be about 15,000 away. Um, you know, it's going to be probably a little bit because, you know, I subtracted 15,000 from what I was aiming for beforehand. Uh, it's probably going to be a little closer to 10 or 11 or something like that uh, because, you know, I'm not factoring in this time here. It could also be further away because I subtracted 15,000 before I divided it by two. So it's like, eh, you know, we'll see how far it's going to be. But you just want to make sure to pick everything here quickly. And we just want to uh, make sure we can end this as quickly as possible, right? And that, that's why it's nice to have the three exploders set up. Um, but... I've never set it up, mostly out of laziness, so we'll see here. We'll see. Okay. I'll meet you back when I manage to uh, get out of this battle. But he'll save the game for us. He'll ask us if we want to save a battle record. Make sure to say yes. All right. So now at this point, we should check our battle record. It should be the other dude. It should not be a hiker anymore. It should be whatever kid I fought. Yep. Tuber kid, that's right. So now what we're gonna do is see how far away we are. Again, it's the exact same process as last time. Um, ideally, we're not that far away. There's a chance we're so close. We don't need to do another battle record, but I think we're going to. I think we're probably gonna have to wait about a, a few more minutes. We'll see. There we go. 
it is a lax nature 70 112 70 47 56 50 calculate all right so we have a few options here let's see where hariyama is specifically it's one or seven so it's got to be it's got to be this one and we are at 386 323 that seems pretty high uh for where we want to be i believe our final target is 397 uh 572 now we also do subtract 800 from this so or my 800 whatever i said subtract 800 so we're here but we want to be uh we want to be here all right we're about 12,000 away which is pretty good uh that's we're very very close to where we want to be so what i'm going to do is subtract 5,000 from this this is usually my uh typical wait time so what i'm going to do is make one more battle record with this as my target so 7,049 um, and that's all we have to wait, really. And so we'll be doing a 5,000 advance wait every single time for the Mew. All right, start the battle. And now we just gotta lose. So I'll cut, I'll come to you when I uh, lose this battle. And then we're just gonna head straight to Mew at that point, because we should be very close to being 5,000 away. All right, the battle is over. And what we're gonna do now is save the record and we're gonna go right to Mew. Take the battle record. Now we should be about 5,000 advances away from the Mew. I'm not even going to check on a Pokemon other than Mew. All right, there's Mew. So we just need to find it. I don't really know how this game works. Oh, I think I hit it. All right, I think I'm on top of Mew right now. So we're going to save. I thought you usually see the tail. But I believe I'm bumping into Mew at this point. So Mew is level 30. I know that much. Uh, at this point, we pretty much just need to do flow timer. So open the battle record and we'll do our usual, our usual angle here. All right. And I'm going to hold this on this screen because if there's anything that can cause the RNG to move extra, like different particle effects or something like that, um, we're just going to leave it at this screen because leaving the game paused would prevent those from happening. I don't know if they happen with Mew. I don't think they do. I don't think there's anything else here besides the Mew. But if that were the case, um if that were the case then uh this prevents it so this is just good practice to be doing in general uh things various anything that can is considered an npc uh can cause that to happen so mew can be if Mew's an NPC, it might have a random rotating. I don't think it has the rotating movement type because I think it has its own special movement type. But if you're ever having trouble with the RNG, uh, that might be the purpose. Or that might be the problem, excuse me. Um, stuff like cut trees are random noise, for example. So you hit A and then the battle starts right away. And one of the reasons we're not going to... So I'm not surprised this isn't shiny. And one of the reasons I'm not surprised this is not a shiny is because... You saw I hit A on Mew, and then there was a long animation. So that long animation, we have to account for, right? And I don't know how long it is. I don't want to look up how many advances it is. So the simple way to do it is just to miss once. It's very simple. So we'll, we'll catch this Mew. We'll see where we're at. We'll do plus 1,000 then. All right. So it seems this is the Mew that we hit. Um, we hit 398329. We were quite a ways away. So let's see, uh, what I'll do is I'll paste that there. This is our target. I'll do subtract this. So we were 757 late. So my target was 5,000. So I'll do 5,000 minus 757. This is our new target. And again, I'm gonna catch the next few of these in case the secret ID was wrong. Please be blue. Please be blue. There it is. Literally second try. Literally, the, it, this was the second try. This is why RNG is sick. Now, a lot of people are into Pokeball matching. I'm not. I'm just catching it in a Master Ball. I think legendaries in a Master Ball are cool anyway. Um, but this is going to be a timid Mew. I'll show the stats just in case. But literally, we got this second try. Um, 
A lot of people might say, oh, two hours, it's a lot for a 5 IV Shiny Mew. I don't think so. Um, hold on, I want to check something. I wanted to look up what the mightiest mark was called in Japanese. I'm going to name the Mew that. So it's going to be the mightiest Mew. We'll take a look at this thing. It's going to be timid, I'm sure. Okuhyobi. There it is. Timid. That's the timid nature. I'll type in the stats just so you guys, you know, know. Uh, but we're going to 474, 81. And you also know when they're all repeating like this on a Mew, it's going to be all the same. There it is. There it is. Our perfect Mew. Five, six perfect stats. Um, and this is going to be transferable all the way up to... It's going to be transferable all the way up to um, Scarlet and Violet, which I will do now. I'm going to send it all the way up. We're going to see the journey. I'm also going to EV train it and get the uh, Terras going as well. All right, it works. So there's my Mew. I'll just send up a bunch of Celebi. That's fine. The Platinum doesn't... I thought Platinum also had the day restriction. Cannot fly to the Pal Park. That means I have to swim there. I don't know if I've ever been to the Pal Park or not. Oh, boy. Let me see if I have any in-game Pokemon that can do this. So, but... Oh, it's, it's, he's asking me if I, I don't know. I, I was like, I was like, what? This menu is never here. Uh, but it, it was asking me if I'd ever um, done the pal park before. I was like, oh, do you need a tutorial? Yep. Use the last one. I guess it was meant to be. There's the mightiest. Come back to the ball. Come back. Okay, so at this point, we're just going to uh, trade it over to the other game. So I'm going to go into my PC really quick uh, and take out the Mew. I'm not going to trade over the Celebes. I don't really care if they go up or not. Oh, hello. <laughs> the shiny Clefairy. I don't know where you're from. I don't know where you came from, where you were birthed. All right, talk to this guy. One of the cool things about this is gold will say hello to me in Japanese. Konnichiwa. <laughs> I think that's really cool, even though it's an English game. I want to trade. I just think that's like a little cute detail to show you that they were like, because Gen 3 was the first game where international stuff worked out. And Gen 4 was really the first gen where you were like, you were gonna, it's very, very international in Gen 4 because of the, the online trade features since Gen 3 didn't have that. So it's actually like kind of, I wouldn't say it's a miracle, but it's very cool that they made international trade possible when it didn't have to be. And so I think that's very cool uh, in, in Gen 3 specifically. We get to see the Muse Heart Gold sprite as well. Back when they used to do different sprites for different games. Can't really even do that with 3D models, but... I believe they stopped that in uh, Gen 4. I guess it's because in Gen 5, they're all moving as well. It's so funny. This guy also like talks internationally as if he is like, this is language. This is region lock. Like I couldn't send this from a Japanese game. I would need to send this from a um, English game. There it is. Don't know why it didn't appear before. All right. Mew. Oh, Mew's actually over here. Mew up. Now, everyone else that I'm sending up is going to be a lie. So there's a trick to if you only want to send one Pokemon, all we have to do is only catch Mew in this minigame. This isn't like the Pal Park. So I need to find Mew. There it is. He's in the middle bush. Oh. It's gonna, it went into this, which means it's going to come out another bush somewhere. All right, we caught Mew. Now I'm going to catch nothing else. And what this will do is it will only transfer Mew over to uh, Gen 5, which is exactly what I want. So as I've said a few times, my 3DS with a capture card does not have a Pokemon Bank installed. So uh, we're going to be using my uh, 3DS old style. So... Here's my white version, just to show you that I'm actually doing it all. But let's see the white version. Oop, and there it goes. We're gonna go to Poke Transporter. 
And I have a, you need a copy of a Gen 6 or 7 game on hand. So I've got a copy of Y on hand because you can't even access Pokemon Bank without that. And you do technically need to enter bank, I believe. I don't think the transporter box shows up when you're trying to migrate to home. So I just selected to move Mew. It's the only one I'm moving up. This is the transport box. 95 is the first free one. Save. All right, now we can go to the Switch games. But I still need to stay connected to bank. So I'm going to connect there and I'm going to go to the Switch games. Minor problem. Uh, I forgot the DLC. This I'm recording this the day the DLC came out. So. Oops. <laughs> I have to wait 40 minutes. Uh, 45 minutes, apparently, for this to download. So that's fun. So I will uh, come back then. <laughs> the time's going up. No. I'll pause the timer for this one. I don't usually pause the timer for other stuff, but I'll pause it for this one. Okay, that took a really long time. I don't know if my internet is slow or if the servers are slow because like everyone's downloading it today, but I had to update home and this. All right, now I will move it into Violet or Scarlet, excuse me. Oh, I have to. Okay, so <clears throat> what it says, by the way, what it means when I do that is that my Scarlet is actually updated, right? But what, what happens is after the game updates, you have to save the game. So I have to load up Scarlet, save my game, and then connect to Pokemon Home. Um, because they just refuse to even remotely support outdated save files on Home, which is, I think, crazy, by the way. I'm excited to boot this game up and see any of the uh, changes. You know, stuff like, I'm hoping, I've heard preliminary reports that box loading is faster. I don't even have to have the DLC installed, which I don't, by the way. So now I can move it into, into Scarlet. I don't understand how it determines what box it goes into. Now we can go back into Scarlet and actually train this puppy up. So since Mew isn't legal in BGC, not that that's the only format playable, but I don't really think it's particularly great Pokemon in OU. Um, plus you kind of need a well-trained Mew in order to beat um, the event. So we're gonna train it up in attack and we're gonna get it to level 100. Um, so I should have enough candies just to, to get that guy to 100. Um, and we're gonna give it a pretty normal move set. Not like meant to be a guide to defeat it, but it's just meant to show you like how it's like. I also don't know if I have enough Terra Bug shards for this. The loading does seem to be faster. Still slow for me, but it's better. Oops, wrong one. I have 150 Terra, some dragon. I have 21 bugs, so we need bug Terra shards. Um, Mew, we're gonna EV train first. So we'll see what attacks I have. I know I wanna give it struggle bug. I know I wanna give it swords dance. There we go. Leech life, I do. Beautiful. And I guess the last one should be like light screen or it should be light screen. If I, I don't, but I, clearly I don't have it. The electric terrain is not bad. We'll give it electric terrain. Electric terrain is to prevent Mewtwo from sleeping. Now we're going to need to EV train this to get it to 100. All right, it's at 100 now. Uh, mints. It actually should be a jolly mint, which is funny. Uh, don't appear to have one right now, which isn't a big deal. And then for the raids, it shouldn't be too tough. Um, I'll probably have to use someone else for the for the terror raid battles, but it's not still not a big deal. Because we have the Blissey raids going around, so I should be able to get a decent amount of bugs. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, Mew is level 100, but just because it's level 100 doesn't mean it's gonna be good at taking the raids down. That is physical if I'm doing Blisseys. Nope, 13 max attack. Struggle bug is just to lower Mewtwo's thing, so it's not actually necessary. Oh, I should have bought a mint too. I will also PP up the leech lights because there's not a lot of them actually. All right. So, also I haven't done the the glory shot yet of Mew. Best all around, as you can see. So, very good Mew. All right, we need about 20 more Terra Bug shards. So let's see if we have any. That's one blissy right down. Tell me that gave me. Bug five, bug fifth, that's 20. Two. 
That might have been enough. That's going to be really close to enough. I might be at like 40. 45 or... I think I'm like 48. Exactly 50. Very nice. Awesome. So I can just go to Medallion and change the Terra type. So I don't think I have the Mew Mewtwo rate on my game. We'll join that one up. I don't know if we'll be able to beat it with randoms. We'll see what these kids have. Hopefully we just get a bunch of Mew people. Make sure it's this one. Okay. <laughs> that was weird. All right, I guess it worked. It said communication ended due to an error. Am I getting kicked out? What happened? Let's see. I haven't done a raid with random people in so long. So I don't know if this is going to be doable. Oh, I'm the only shiny. <laughs> Mew is going to go all out. I guess I don't mind struggle bugging. Mud slap. Oh, someone does have a light screen. Very nice. Two light screens. Okay. The accuracy drop is very funny. We got one SD up. Now I'll start going in. I'll go back to full. Shouldn't be able to rest. Oh, he Misty Terrain. Electric Terrain does the same thing. Misty Terrain pre prevents all status. Electric Terrain prevents just sleep. And that's it. Woo! So just about four hours this journey took. And my Mew gets the, the, the killing blow, which is awesome. I've not caught this yet. I should use a Premier Wall, but whatever. Terra shards, EXP candy, ability capsule, little bottle cap. Very cool. This is the first one of these raids I've done since, like, not Charizard, but the one after Charizard. I don't remember who it was. All right. So there's the Mewtwo. But now my Mew has the mightiest mark. We are the unrivaled. Let's see if we can't get that into a battle. I don't know if it works with wild Pokemon, but... You know what I think it does? I think you have to... I think I have to swap, right? I think if I swap into Mew, it'll work. Yeah, the Unrivaled. There it is. All right, well, I hope you guys appreciate this video. Uh, if you like seeing stuff like this where I catch an old Pokemon in Gen 3 or 4 and send it all the way up to Scarlet and Violet, please comment down below. If you've got any questions, you can also ask them down below. I hope you enjoyed this more extended look at uh, EV training and everything, and just getting the uh, event done as well. So, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next video. Bye-bye.